Let's continue our deep dive into the geometry tools in sketch mode. And in this lecture, we'll be looking at the six commands in the editing group. Modify, mirror, divide, delete segment, corner, and rotate resize. And the first one that we're looking at here is modify. And I actually don't consider this one of the geometry editing tools. I actually consider it more of the dimensioning group. And the first one for modify is typically used when you're trying to change a bunch of dimensions at one time or change everything proportionately or when you get failures in regeneration for a given value. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have a sketch and I wasn't paying attention to the relative size, but now it's time to change the dimensions to the values that they should have. So let's say that this dimension should actually be a value of 20. When I type that in, Wow, the sketch flip-flopped in all sorts of ways that I don't want. I want to retain the shape. So let's use our friend undo in order to get back where we were. And with the modify command, where I find this easiest, you could select the command first and then pick different dimensions and they'll show up in the dialog box. But what I like to do is swipe a box over all the different dimensions and then click modify so that they are all listed inside of here and let's stretch it out and so first off you'll see the different dimensions listed in here and they have different symbols based on what kind of dimension that they are so for example this is diameter and this is a length dimension and here we can see this is an angular dimension in the model and you have the different values which you can change one by one you also have slider bars and as you move this around you can see the sketch dynamically update and this slider bar down here controls the sensitivity of the slider bars over to the right. But here's where I find the real power of the Modify Dimensions dialog box. It's these two buttons down here. First off, you might want to turn off the automatic regeneration when you're changing dimensions so that it doesn't try to update the sketch in real time. For example, here we have, where is that dimension? 436. I could change this one and say, hey, I want this one to be a value of 20. And this particular dimension over here actually should be a value of 4. And as I click on a dimension, it auto advances. But let's go back to this first one up over here. Okay, maybe this should be a value of 5. And this dimension over there maybe that should also be a value of four and so I'm just picking up some different values in here and let's see for that one let's make that two and that one over here let's make this 20 and so I've turned off regeneration the values have changed on the screen but the actual shape doesn't update until I click the OK button and let's refit and it zooms in my dimensions are a little off and so that's how it updated everything I'm going to hit the undo button to show you the other button in the dialog box that I really like. And so again, we want this to change to a value of 20. So we can swipe a box over everything and go to modify and I'll turn off regenerate. I always like to stretch out the box to see it, all the dimensions in here. But this is a really convenient one locking the scale and so that way I can keep the general shape and I change the one dimension that I want and all the other dimensions update proportionately and at this point if I want to I could refine some of the different dimensions like I could say oh yeah maybe this should be more like 12 and this dimension over oh I want to turn off lock scale uh, let's change this one back to 20 and then maybe this one should be a value of 4 and 45 is good for that one. Let's change this dimension to a value of 8. And this one over here, let's make that, say, 15. And let's see, the only one I haven't changed yet, this one over here, let's say that that one's going to be a value of 5. And now when I click OK, I can zoom back in, and it updates everything to the different dimensional values. Looks like my dimensions are a little far away. I might need to adjust their location in space here. But that is the function of the modify button, uh, especially useful when, again, you are trying to change everything proportionately and when you're trying to change, make big changes to the dimensions and you're getting the errors in the bottom of the message area that's telling you that it cannot regenerate to those different values. 
But anyhow, I'm happy with these changes. Let's hit the check mark, and that takes care of the modify command. And I don't need this one anymore. Let's go ahead and hide it. All right, next up, let's take a look at how to use the mirror command. And so I'm going to edit definition of this sketch. And I've got this hexagon, and maybe for whatever reason, I need a mirrored copy of it over here. What I need to do first is create a center line. And I'll create the center line. And I just want to show you that the center line doesn't have to go on your sketch references. Your center line can be placed wherever you need to place it in order to create your mirror. Maybe I want to create a dimension to control the position of that center line and maybe make it a value of 200. And the mirror command is grayed out. So this is one of those commands where you need to select the entities first and then click on the command. That is called object action. And again, I am a big fan of swiping a box over the different entities that I want. There we see the mirror command is available. And then you pick a center line. You'll notice that it's not registering me trying to pick a sketch reference. You do, you do need to use a center line. And if you don't have a center line, you'll need to put one into your sketch. And you'll notice that we don't have any dimensions over here because it's being driven by the dimensions over on the other side. You'll notice that if I change a dimension over here, let's change this down to 100, the mirrored version automatically updated because of our symmetry constraints that were placed in the sketch on the right hand side because of the mirror command. That's good for that one. Let's hit the check mark. The third command in the editing group is the divide command. And this one I end up using a lot with swept blends and blends where you have to have an equal number of vertices between your different sections. And for example, let's say that I needed multiple vertices in this section. Often I'll throw in a bunch of center lines and let's just locate them out over here. And let's change some of these angles. Double clicking on the dimensions and entering in a value. And then when you click on divide, you could Break this up into the different entities at the intersections of those center lines and the original ellipse. And you can even use the intersections with your sketch references and intersections with other geometry in the model. And in this case here, I end up with a bunch of other dimensions. I'm going to turn off my dimension display for a moment. But the important thing is, now I've got a bunch of individual entities here, which you can see as I select different ones and hit the delete key on the keyboard. So that is the divide command. Let's hit the check mark. Next command is delete segment, or what I like to call squiggle trim. And basically, whatever you squiggle your mouse over is going to go away. Let's turn off our datum plane display. So clicking on delete segment, then if I squiggle my mouse over this entity, it goes away. Squiggle over that, it goes away in this one. And I'll stop there and you can see the entities that disappeared. Here I had multiple different entities, so sometimes you'll have to squiggle over to the same entity two times. And let's get rid of that and that. And I'm continuing on. Oops, didn't want to get that one. And you can see that now I am starting to get a pretty interesting shape here. And let's squiggle over that entity and that entity. Get rid of these two, squiggle over there, squiggle over these two. And lastly, and now I have sort of like a pretty petal. Now for the corner command, which I like to think of as trim extend. So here we have a couple lines that are overlapping. When we choose corner, the entities that you pick are going to be retained and trimmed to one another. Let me undo that one just to show you that if I pick, say, this side of the horizontal line and this side of the vertical line, you'll notice again, I'm getting the entities that I am keeping. And also with the corner command, if you pick two entities, if possible, they will be extended to each other until they touch. 
The last command in the editing group is rotate resize. And this one I end up using a lot, especially when I am importing a .sec file that I've saved out from another sketch. So let's choose file system. I'm just gonna grab a sketch that I have in my folder. I'm gonna drop it on the screen. And this is essentially the same dialog box as rotate resize. And when you're bringing it in here, you can choose to change the scale. By the way, let me turn my dimension display back on so I can get the dimension on the screen. And so here is a relative size of it. I can change this maybe to 0.5. And let's zoom in and zoom out to repaint the screen. And by default, you get a drag handle for moving this around that's located at the geometric center of the sketch. There are some reference entities in here, so that's why this turns out to be the geometric center. But you do not have to drag it from that location. Sometimes it's convenient to drag it from another location because that's what you want to snap to your sketch references or other geometry in the sketch. And so to change your drag location, all you have to do is hover your mouse over that circle with the X in the middle, that tar target sort of symbol, and then hold down the right mouse button and drag it to where you want it to snap to. And so let's say I want it to use this side over here as my drag location. That way I can drag it around over here and maybe snap it right to my sketch references so that I don't end up with any unwanted dimensions. And you also have the ability to rotate this. You can see as I'm rotating it. And for rotating it, you end up with a dimension and you can change that either right here on the screen or you could change it from the ribbon. And when you're happy, you can hit the check mark. And so there I have the different entities in here. And again, you don't have to use rotate resize with just imported geometry. You can use it with any geometry you have in your sketch. And so let's say that I created some other feature. Let's drag in, actually let's create it from scratch. I'm just gonna grab a rectangle and drag it out over here. Well, you can swipe a box over it and then rotate resize. And just like before, change the drag handle location and then move this entire entity entity around where you want it to be and change the different dimensions and hit the check mark and there we have it located from the rotate resize command. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.